Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. Today, Ian Buck and Ryan Rampersad will be sharing their experiences with Android 6.0 Marshmallow. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO1. Hello, Ian. Hey, Ryan. How's it going? It's going pretty well. I hear you're armed with Android 6.0. I am, yes. We've had it for, what, about a month now? Yeah, about a month. Since, yeah, the, uh, since the, the Nexus event that we covered under the, uh, the extra dimension number, like... Five, sure. Number five. I don't count. Yeah. I'll put the show uh, the link to that in the show notes. I, I also was testing the builds before the official release of Marshmallow, the release candidate. So I have some experience. Ah, mm-hmm. I remember taking the first build um, quite ignorantly to jury duty and suffering. Oh right. So I will not be doing that again. That was a long time ago. That was that was uh... then back in June. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so now that the now that the final version is here and we've had quite a bit of experience and we actually have a, enough uh, stuff done where we can record this show, <laughs> you know we've used it every day. We're pretty much used to it now. Um, surprisingly, there hasn't been any um, bug fixes or anything yet. So yep, nope. Um, so here we are on six point oh. So let's so yeah, the way that um, let's talk about kind of generally how Android updates have have gone the yearly ones. Um, so for the last few years, they've had typically a um, one year where they focus on like the kind of user interface, kind of ch- tweaking that and changing stuff, um, and less about new actual features, right? And then the next year they'll have a, a version that keeps the same kind of um, user interface and then gives us some some new features. Um, so last year was bringing uh, material design to Android, and uh, and this year is keeping material design pretty much exactly as it was before, no changes there, um, and giving us a bunch of new features. Yep. Um, so I just figured out why I can't find the episode that I'm looking for. It's in uh, a Nexus special, not in well, the Well, there dimension. you go. Yep. Um, so <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, Android 6.0, um, shall, we, shall we list the uh, the the features that we want to talk about or do we want to go through them one by one and talk whatever about whatever you detail? like i'm right. i'm willing to go all right let's it. well let's do it in detail um okay so so now on tap was kind of the um the flagship feature that they that they've been talking about since google io right um and what it is is it's kind of a, a growth off of of google now um where as we know, Google Now's goal has always been to kind of give you the information that it thinks that you need at any given time without you asking for it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so if you've recently received an email with some like tracking information for an order that you you know that that you have, um, it'll just tell you where that order is or if, if it's you're, still on time. Or... If you're at an airport, it'll surface your boarding information. Mm-hmm. It will do things automatically for you. Yep. Um, it's great. I think I think one of my favorites is uh, if if you're nice and thorough with keeping your like Google Calendar events mm-hmm. um, accurate and actually put in location data and stuff for them, then it will tell you like, okay, it's time to leave, leave yep. for the for your next event so that you can get there on time based on current traffic conditions. Mm-hmm. Um, that's beautiful. So what now on tap does um, is it it uh, allows you to basically take whatever's on your screen at the moment, no matter what app you're in, and basically do kind of a Google search on that. Um, so, like, their example has always been, uh, let's say you're you're in a text chat with somebody and they, you're talking back and forth about, like, what restaurant you're going to go to and stuff. Um, and and so if you hit now on tap, then you can, uh, it'll it'll search for that restaurant, find it, you know, give you some information about it, where it is, what, you know, what kinds of ratings it's gotten, um, you know, when it's, uh, when it's crowded, when it's not, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, it, it just removes the whole, you having to go and find that information on your own, um, because there are a lot of people who don't know how to find that information, I think already. Um, so it's, it's making it much, much easier to do that kind of thing. I haven't found it useful at all. I haven't either. Uh, so first, let's describe where it is in the system. I think that's really important. Yes. Um, so up until now... Oh, no. What have I done? Okay, so up until Android 6.0, Google Now has been a swipe up from the home button, right? A very you... natural gesture mm-hmm. 
that anybody might just accidentally do and to find out where it is. Yeah, and then they'll be really confused about why they're suddenly in the Google app and uh, they'll leave and never come back. Probably. Yeah. Um, but so, so swiping up from the home button would bring you to the actual Google app where they have all of these now cards, you know, so it'll, it'll tell you your boarding information, your tracking information, whatever it's, you know, it needs to tell you. Um, now on tap removes that gesture, uh, and instead replaces it with a long press on the home button. Yep. Which and so it, then what it does is that it, it animates a little white border going around your screen, mm -hmm. which effectively is it showing you that it's taking the screenshot yep. and then searching for it. It's kind of a step backwards. Kind of. I, I mean, I in terms of the gestures, I don't really mind one over the other. I think the first one is easy to discover. It's really simple. It's something you can do one-handed, mm -hmm. and it's just it's just a natural movement. And, and Holding it, funny on your home button is weird and, and not intuitive. Um if if anything, it really would be, would have made more sense to have the swipe up for Google Now normal and the long press for now, now on tap. tap. I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would add that the the swipe up kind of uh, it, it it's already a thing that Android users naturally do because you swipe up to uh, to unlock the phone, right? You know, yep. and it's yeah. So yeah. So. Going back to how useful it is, have you ever actually ended up using it? it I've I've kind of tried, um, and and I mean, so even when I wasn't trying to use it, you know, even when I was just trying to get to the now cards, mm -hmm. every time that I did that, it searched for the stuff that was on my screen, mm -hmm. and then I went to the now cards because that's a button down at the bottom, right? Right. Um, and I was okay with with letting that be for the time being because I wanted to see kind of what now on tap would kind of bring me. Mm -hmm. Um, it never ever was able to surface anything really useful. Um, it it never crossed my mind when I was in a conversation with somebody to like try to use it. You know, right? I didn't encounter any situations where I thought it would work, and I never encountered any situations where uh, I didn't expect it to work, and it did. Mm -hmm. It just never gave me anything useful. So I remember using it on a chat with you, in fact, mm -hmm. and it searched for Ian Buck, like you'd expect. Yep. But of course, the Google results for Ian Buck are Mr. NVIDIA. Right. So it's not what I was looking for. Um, and th I mean, that's a uh, an understandable mistake to make. Yeah, but it knows that I'm in a Hangouts with you. Mm -hmm. It could know that I'm in a Hangouts, and, and it, it could just surface Google Plus stuff or something. And when yeah, it should know when you make a regular Google search, it gives you like these personalized right. uh, things. So there's some weird stuff that maybe the Hangouts app didn't implement for APIs in the back end or something yet. Uh, I know in in Google Now cards, I mean uh, in Now on Tap, you can implement the special APIs to augment the additional data, mm. but, you know, just didn't happen yet. I also have tried searching with it for programming-related stuff. You know, I kind of do that a lot. Mm -hmm. Bad results trying to do that. <laughs> you, you get very generic things. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, so I think both of us by now have just uh, given up. changed it. Because uh, luckily, they do still let you change the settings so that instead of uh, a long press doing now on tap, and then you have to do another tap to get into yep. the now cards... We've changed it so that you just long press and then it takes you straight to the now cards. That's a better better improvement. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, okay, so the second thing um, is app permissions. They've completely changed the way that um, app permissions are supposed to work in Android. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be that when whenever you installed a new app, um, it would give you this long list of things that it needed permission to do in on the phone so like um facebook messenger for example needs permission to access the microphone access the camera yep. access um your contacts access As access your cell phone yeah. state access your network that i chose that example because it asks for literally everything right you know and um, there are legitimate reasons it does those things mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but sometimes sometimes there's not like sometimes you get uh you know a flashlight app that uh only needs your location ac uh, to access because um it wants to show you ads based on your location, you know, something like right. that. Um, so in those cases, uh, you might want to selectively revoke some of those um, permissions. Mm -hmm. But uh, up until now, Android has not really given you the option to do that. Um, so the way that it works now is when you install an app, it won't ask for any permissions. But once once you start using that app and that app needs 
to use a, th- a particular thing, it will ask for permission to do that. And right. then the, you know, it'll, I don't think it actually kicks you out of the app to go to the system settings. It just pops up with a little system settings window on top of it. Yeah, I think what it does when, so when I've seen it ask for the camera, it will say allow or deny. And if mm-hmm. you hit deny, nothing happens. If you hit allow, you get to use it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so yeah, I, I experimented a little bit with like, okay, um, Evernote is asking for permission to view my calendar. Let's see what happens when I hit no. Well, then Evernote just insistently tries to ask me for permission for the calendar over and over again, saying, hey, your experience will be so much better if you let me do this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't see how that's uh, how that's yeah. true. Right. Um, I'm going to stop using Evernote soon. That's okay. <laughs> I did the same thing. Maybe we should SO Evernote. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of things that we can second opinion here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and and on top of this, like you can also go into the system settings and view either by app what things that, that app has permission to, to use and, and selectively revoke those. Or you can go in, for example, like uh, by microphone and just look at what apps have requested access to use the microphone and then, you know, deny any of those um any apps that have not been updated to use this new app permission system um if you try to revoke something android will angrily tell you like hey you're gonna break things when you try to do this because that app is not going to expect to not have access to that thing um so i've i've tried out you know revoking different things um for different apps uh, just to see what happens. I don't think that I've broken the world yet, mm-hmm. um, but uh, you know I may have, and I just didn't notice. So I I think it's pretty cool that they have that big list of apps that you can tune. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for example, in the body sensors section, I yeah. have Fit, Google Play Services, and Tasker, and mm-hmm. I just would have never associated Tasker with that. Well, that's the thing about Who Tasker knew? though is that Tasker can but, do whatever you want. I it had to. no idea. Yeah, that that's cool. Um, so what what are some of the downsides of this new system for these permissions? Um, well, it's going to be a there there was something to the system of asking once mm-hmm. and just never bothering you again, right? Um, because it's really annoying when I'm trying to use an app and suddenly it's going like, "Hey, I need to ask you for permission for this thing that I've never asked for before." Um, and it's like, "Okay, you're you're wasting my time right now." And right. it is still only a one-time thing, mm-hmm. um, but it's like a one-time thing for every single sensor that it wants right. to access. So I think that's that that is definitely a concern. Uh, I wonder how many people, when they get that prompt, yes or no, do you want to allow camera usage? Mm-hmm. When aren't they going to just hit yes? Um, well, I, it's are people smart enough to know, I think you're going to have two groups of people, people who always click yes, or people who always are like, that's scary. No. And then there are Mm -hmm. people like us who actually think about it. I don't know. I probably won't even think about it. Yeah. Yeah. So what, there's another problem potentially too, and that is because it's on 6.0, how many years is it going to take to get this widespread enough in people's hands? So I think we're at 0.3 saturation with Marshmallow. 0.3%? Point three percent. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Um, how many? Not only that. So that's how many people are going to get the ability to use the system. But then, mm-hmm. how many years are we going to need to wait for apps to switch to this target API twenty three? I believe. Well, hopefully, any new apps that come out uh, are going to use it. Hopefully, um, but maybe they won't. Uh, yeah. So, like, how long do we have to wait until Facebook uses it, or Instagram, or any mm-hmm. other the big name brand apps? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and there's um. I mean, really, what's the incentive on their end to do that? Right. I can't th- really think of one except for um, conforming and uh, making the hardcore Android community happy with them. That's pretty much the only incentive, and that's actually a really good incentive. Yeah, but I feel like those um, those companies have never really cared about that because otherwise we would have a nice material design Facebook app. Yeah, I'm okay with that, honestly. Yeah, okay. Um. So yeah, that's app permissions. Mm-hmm. Any anything else to say about no, that? No, I think I'm pretty much okay with it. Cool. Um, do not disturb. Um, I Total w- silence. There you go. I had to do it. <laughs> I really, really like this new system. Um, after my initial, you know, because the way that you used to um, change what you know the priority mode on on the Android notifications was you had to hit the volume yep. button to bring up the volume slider and then you would hit that little down arrow to to um, 
get it to show you like, okay, I want either priority, I want all, or I want none. Um, and uh, now it's it's located, it's a do not disturb um, option in the quick settings, which uh, makes a heck of a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and But I, I still kind <clears> of <throat> panicked the first time that I tried to turn it on when I was going to sleep because I was expecting it to be in the same place as before. And it's I, not. I hadn't looked at the the quick settings yet and so i was like oh no am i going to be getting notifications all night because i can't turn this off um so i yeah contacted you and, and you set did me, i tell you the answer set me straight yes well i'm so glad <laughs> i knew the answer <laughs> um so the new do not disturb section has priority only alarms only and my favorite total silence yep and i really like the total silence when i use it frequently in class uh it has two options of its own and until you turn this off or for a set number of hours, mm-hmm. which I think is really fancy, really nice. I, yes, I I do like the uh, extra degree of granularity. Yep. Um, you know the the old system did have a total silence; it was called none, um, and it worked exactly the same. Except that now we also have the alarms only option, mm-hmm. and then we have priority. You know, so we we have one more level. Yeah, that we can choose and from. apparently there's this automatic rules section, which is yes. also super useful, mm-hmm. and I, I don't think they made a big enough deal about it. No, yes, that is a, a lifesaver, because now I can, I've, I've got one set for my weeknights, I've got one set for my weekend nights, mm-hmm. I've got one set for the period of time during the day when I am teaching, yep. um, I've got one set for the period of time that I am in church. Um, you know, So I, that's pretty much your entire life. Yeah, basically. I never ever have to think about um, turning it on or turning it off. Mm-hmm. You know, the, I encountered so many times um, previously where I would put it into like priority only uh, for and, and, you know, since I didn't know when that period was going to be ending, right. I just did it indefinitely. And then I forgot to turn my notifications back on at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, so being able to... Um, to set all of those automatic rules um, is a really, really good thing. Yep, definitely. Um, and I did notice, I'm not sure if this is a, a 5.0 um, feature or if this was just on the Moto G, but I noticed that my dad's phone had one slot for an automatic priority, like, you know, do not disturb rule, um, but it didn't have an arbitrary number that you could set like, yeah, it could be. like Marshmallow does. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that... Everything across the board there was an improvement. Mm-hmm. Very good. Do not disturb settings now. Yep. Um, volume control. Uh, this, I guess this one's yeah, all you. Yeah, you know, I... Um, so I still have to click the buttons to get to my volume control slider thing. Right. And I really wish there was just another menu in quick settings that would just let me do it visually without having to use the physical buttons. So tell me, Ryan... Do you actually click the button and then use your finger on the screen to move the slider ever? No. No. Okay. Because I'm already at the buttons. Exactly. Yeah, but I hate having to do that. Okay. I, I'm in the software. I don't want to make it... You know when you uh, change your volume, it makes the little beep noise after you've let it go for a little bit? You know, if you're changing uh, the volume up or changing oh, okay. your volume down. So, yeah. so you can hear how loud mm-hmm. it is. Well, I don't want to hear it. I just want to make it go all the way to almost zero. Okay. And you've got a ladybug. I do. Um. So I, I would still prefer a visual toggle for the volume. Okay. Yeah, that's... That's not something that I have ever really thought of that I need, but actually most of the um, new improvements that they've made in Marshmallow are things that I never thought that I would need, and now I'm like, oh my god, this is great. I remember having the visual volume thing on my first phone, which was uh, some kind of, you know, slide-out feature phone. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Um, System UI Tuner. So this is a good, very good example of something that I never thought of that is great. Um. So this is this is one of their hidden features, um, similar to the way that uh, developer mode goes. Um, you know, you, for developer mode, you have to tap on uh, the um, phone model like a, a certain number of times yeah. to activate it. Mm-hmm. Um, for system UI tuner, you, when you have the quick settings pulled all the way down, um, you can press and hold on the on the cog up at the top that normally takes you to the settings app. Um, and when you press and hold on that, it'll spin around a bunch, kind of look like a marshmallow. And then you'll have system UI available to you at the bottom of the settings. Um, and what it does is it lets you, um, it lets you rearrange some of the icons in quick settings and, and, you know, tur- turn on or off some of those. So like, you know, if you never ever use the flashlight, you could remove the flashlight from your quick settings. If you, uh, actually use hotspot, um, 
every once in a while you can put that in there as a toggle, you know, and you can move them around so that they kind of fit better with where your fingers are near the screen. Um, so that's a huge, huge plus. That's um, a feature that I saw a friend of mine um, who has a Nexus 5 and had Cyanogen yep. mod on it. That was a feature that I saw that he had, and I was like, I really want that. You, yep. you need to give me that. Now, this is hopefully is the precursor to where this is way more customizable. Like, mm-hmm. this is a great step in the right direction. But I wish apps could put their own thing right in here. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, whatever it might be, but there could be a lot of uses for it. Yeah. There are lots of things that I would be able to like to be able to toggle. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that System UI Tuner lets you do is removing some of the clutter in the status bar. Yep. So in the, the notifi- notification bar up at the top over on the right side, you've got, you know, your clock and your battery and your Wi-Fi and cellular and, and Bluetooth and stuff like that. Um, you know, for I, I used it. Uh, you, you can turn some of those um, icons on or off. Um, so, like, uh, I always have my Bluetooth radio on because uh, I want to just be able to walk up to my Bluetooth speakers and flick the on switch on that, and then mm-hmm. it, they automatically connect. Um, so I don't need to know that my Bluetooth radio is on. I my, know that already. My favorite feature here in the status bar toggle section is Ethernet. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, so that would be for uh, the uh, ne- um, sorry, the NVIDIA Shield. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, I guess that they just call that one the NVIDIA Shield, don't they? The one that's the Android way TV. Way too complicated. Yeah. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, that's the only Android device that I know of that has an Ethernet port. Yeah, I don't know any yeah. others. Um, and then, of course, there's uh, Demo Mode, which is kind of hilarious. Um, it, it removes all of the notifications from, that, from the notifications bar and gives you permanent full bars for Wi-Fi and for LTE and yeah. makes the time... And battery? Yeah, and battery. Good. And makes the time... Six o'clock, and we know that's six point <laughs> uh, It's so funny. Um, so an SD card uh, news is that uh, when when you put in an SD card, you know previously how it worked is you would have your internal storage and then you would have your SD card storage, and you would have to go individually through each app so like if you want your camera to save its pictures onto the sd card you would have to go and tell it to do that if you wanted to install particular um apps onto the sd card you'd better hope that they uh, are able to go there and then you have to go through your um list of apps and move each one that you want to move over there into the sd card yep um now they will they have the option in 6.0 to make your storage adaptable which means that it'll just treat all of that sd card internal storage and everything as one lump sum and uh and then you know you don't really know where things are actually being stored but it doesn't matter because it's all one now in theory that's great sounds really wonderful sounds really useful Mm -hmm. well too bad nexus devices don't have sd card storage right and that's i mean that's uh something that you can legitimately say about it right now yeah, because we're only a month in. Um, but like once my Nvidia Shield tablet has 6.0, True. that's going to be huge because mm-hmm. I was foolish and went and got the 16 gig one and then got a 30, 32 gig uh, SD card. Right. And and then proceeded to try to install all of the games on that tablet, and uh, I'm running out of space. So in the same section, the entire storage settings panel has been updated. Uh, if you remember mm. it previously, it would show these useless bar graphs oh, yeah. of how much storage you've used for apps or podcasts or videos or images. And they've gotten rid of the bar graphs because they were useless. Now it's just two gigabytes, five gigabytes, and so on. Okay. Yeah. I kind of liked the bar graphs. Now, but... there's an additional feature here, which is pretty fancy, which is the Explore button at the bottom, which is basically a very simplistic but useful file browser. Ah. And you can go and click stuff if you want that's cool so the the, that that entire section has been greatly improved nice yeah i there are a lot of android users who will never ever have a file browser on their um phone so it's nice to at least give them of course they're never going to go into that settings section and discover it it's it's nice that it's available yeah yeah yep um text selection this is actually something that a lot of people were were getting really excited about because they all said Google finally fixed their, their text selection, mm-hmm. copy and paste and everything. Um, and I guess that what they mean by that is they're not using icons for copy paste and, and, um, so, cut, but they're actually using those words now here. Let me, let me, let me tell you something. I cut and paste a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, tweets, emails, whatever mm-hmm. it could be. 
and I never knew which button to press for copy and for paste and for cut. The, I, those icons mean, meant nothing to me, and I still don't even know. So I was able to figure them out. With the new system, it's labeled exactly what they mm -hmm. do, and it's great. Now, I have a pretty big screen here on the Nexus 6, but Select All still overflows into the overflow menu, yeah, which is still a sad thing. That's... So maybe the touch targets can be as big, but the text size could be smaller so that I could see all the four of them. I don't know. There still needs to be something. I yeah, do. really. I mean, the, the two buttons that I use uh, in there the most often is select all and then copy mm -hmm. because I'm always, always, always posting something yep. on Google Plus, Twitter and Facebook. Right. And I want the text to be exactly the same. So uh, I guess the only other thing I can say about that is they uh, they realized that putting it in the action bar was not good. Mm -hmm. So how often do you te copy text that's on the lower half of the screen versus the upper half of the screen? Well, it's usually in the middle of the screen and having to reach all the way up here to copy something was just not ideal. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. Yeah. But man, that overflow menu is killing me. I know it is. <laughs> um, so they can still do more in text selection. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the new iPads, those have fancy up, left, down, and right arrows there's um, more granularity. The way you select individual characters and paragraphs and stuff has also been enhanced. Mm -hmm. So there's still more room for improvement. Right. Yep. Yep. There's always room for, room for improvement, especially in battery life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this has uh, been a, a point of contention always when you buy an Android phone, especially, I think, a Nexus phone, is that you're not going to get the best battery life, probably, um, that you could. And uh, so... This year, the way that Google is addressing that is with Doze. Um, so Doze is a feature where um, it, it'll most affect the devices that you use occasionally and then leave on your bedside table the rest of the time. So like your 8-inch miniature tablet that uh, you know you use for like reading because it's nice and a lot bigger than your, uh, your, your phone or whatever. Right. Um, so Doze kind of, uh, if it senses that it hasn't been moved or, or interacted with uh, for a while the device will kind of put itself into this this mode where it won't really let um, apps b refresh in the background. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it still does um, l keep an eye on High Google's... High priority Google push notifications yep. can yep. go through. So hangout messages can get through. Yep. Important emails can get through. Um, which, I mean, I don't even... Uh, in my usage cases, right. I wouldn't even need that in Doze mode because the tablet that I leave at home mm -hmm. is always in... Uh, total silence. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah. Um, I, I, that's another, I, I haven't been able to check and see if that actually works very well because my phone is always on me and, uh, is always yeah. moving with me. So it, I don't think that it ever really goes into doze mode. Um, once my shield tablet gets to 6.0, I'll be able to, you know, figure out if it actually lasts long or not. So I have the, uh, Nexus 7 2000. 13 edition. Okay. And uh, it doesn't have six yet. Okay. For some reason. Huh. And um, it can last about two days without Doze. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good, I guess. I don't know what it's doing in the background to waste all that power. Yeah. But, you know, Android. Um, but it's not like, you know, um, the iPad Air that I have. Yeah, it's like five, by, five yeah. weeks. It yeah. Can just infinitely long battery life. Especially, I mean, like, the, the things that I use that device for are... Um, every uh, class period, I use it to take attendance while I'm walking around the room. Yeah. And then I put it down, and I don't use it again until the next day. Uh-huh. You know? So I, the iPads do something right. And so the problem with Doze is that it's not useful for phones as much. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be something like Doze, but for phones, sort of in your pocket. Yeah, but I can't... like As we said in the... Uh, the um, next to special i can't really think of what that could be because i when i have my phone on me i want it to be doing all of these things constantly being my pedometer checking my location every once in a while so that it you know knows where i am and whether you know, and i need to leave for my next appointment you know stuff like that that's perfect i think all those things are valid use cases but one of the problems i've had lately is i will go onto campus i will go into a building and i will be tortured when Google Play Services and Android Account Manager go insane. I don't think that anybody knows what's going on with your phone. I don't think I know what's going on with my phone. But there should be a way in the system to tell it, 
don't let any of these things run anymore. Just stop. Mm. It's over. But it's great when that's part of the core system. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, the lock screen. They've uh, changed a couple of things. Oh, wait, no. App standby. Forgot to talk about that. Eh. Um. Okay, whatever. It's not that exciting. Yeah. It uh, doesn't work. <laughs> yes. Um. So normally... Is, wait, is that part of Doze or is that separate? It's separate from Doze. Okay. Uh, in the sense that you can toggle each individual app on whether Doze should affect it or not. Mm-hmm. So when it goes into Doze mode, Tasker, for example, goes off. It doesn't run anymore. Right. But you can tell it, let Tasker do whatever it wants because Tasker's probably doing something important. Yeah, because I have told Tasker exactly what I want it to do. Right. Yeah. So that could be useful, but unfortunately, it doesn't work on the five apps that you want to stand by, such as Google Play Services and Android Account Manager. I'm always going to laugh at you about this until you, until you get a new phone and then you find a new new issue to Watch complain me. about. Um, okay, so the lock screen they've uh, they've replaced the phone shortcut shortcut with a voice search or a shortcut. So what do you think about that? I. I mean, I'm okay with it because I never use the phone app even when I'm making calls because I use Hangouts for that because I'm weird and ha- I use Google Voice. Yeah. Um, I don't think that for most people it makes sense. I think it is the single best change because for most people they don't have stock Android, so it doesn't matter. And for the people who do have stock Android, they don't use their phones as a phone anyway. Hmm. That's a... Mm, yeah, but what about like the Motorola you know the Moto G. People, lots of people got that because it's a cheap phone that they doesn't it have heard. a s- different lock screen though? I, no. I, I don't have a no 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 Moto the, G. Um, the Moto G has the you know the the black with white text oh, kind right, of right, um, right. glanceable thing, mm-hmm. but then the actual lock screen is it is, is the same. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, now nobody uses the phone. Do you know how many times a day I would accidentally somehow swipe that thing up and. Just start calling Dave Putnam. <laughs> well, you, everybody needs more Dave Putnam in their life. No. All right. Um, now, there, there is one thing about those that I really, really like that they changed. Um, is It used to be that um, in order to open the camera, it was a swipe directly to the left yep. from the right. And for the phone, it was a swipe directly from the right, left to... Wait... Whatever the opposite is. Yeah, I know what you mean. Now it's a swipe from where that icon is down in the corner up into the the rest of the screen, mm-hmm. which is Way much better. much more consistent. Um, you know, I don't I don't accidentally activate that ever, um, and I don't have trouble activating it when I want to. It's it's much much better now. I think that is something they figured out after watching people suffer <laughs> over the course of a year. Yeah. Um, now, one thing that I don't like about the fact that the voice search is, is one of those shortcuts now is that, uh, um, well, for one thing, for some reason, my phone uh, has stopped being able to listen for my OK Googles when uh, it's not on the Google app. I need hmm. to troubleshoot that and figure out why that is. I might just wipe uh, Android and and reinstall 6.0 on top of it, you know, because I haven't done that in two years. So uh, I'm guessing that there's a few things that'll be solved by. I that. think I should wipe my phone that I wiped previously. <laughs> um, but anyway, so so the reason I bring this up is because um, I, I saw that icon down there and I was like, hey, that's really useful for me now that I can't uh, just use my voice to activate voice searching. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I would swipe up from there and then I'd be like. Um, wake me up in 30 minutes because I'm going to take a nap. Mm-hmm. Um, and it would say, actually, I can't do that if all the device is locked. To keep going, unlock your device. That's great. Which is ridiculous because Smart Lock is telling me that the device is already unlocked because mm-hmm. I'm at home. So does that because it just doesn't know that? or I don't know. I, I, think, I think that it tells you that whenever you try to mm. use a voice command that requires you to have the device unlocked if you got there from that shortcut i mean i guess there could be a lot of cases where google now sort of can leak info about you when your phone's locked maybe yeah so yeah mm-hmm. but i mean i've got all these other notifications that are on my lock screen that can leak information well about them i mean you could just well. google you and, and yeah sure. there you go um so yeah there's there's that um it's a little strange but yeah so on a related note, uh, the how about the new clock on the lock screen? Yeah, ooh, that really threw me off the first few times that I saw it. Um, but I do like the the new bold. Um, I don't even know what the old one looks like anymore. It's, I mean, it was basically the same thing but thinner. Um, mm. And it's it's just you know when a, a lot of times when I 
take my phone out of my pocket and just unlock it for a moment. I want to just see the uh, the time. It's nice having a nice big bold time there so that I I can't miss it. Um, it's hard to mistake what it's saying, you know. In addition to that, the letters below it are now all uppercase, small caps. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is brought to you by the Roboto Mono font. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can enjoy that. I take it that you like that font. I do. Big fan. <laughs> Huge. Um, so then the last thing that we got to talk about is uh, in the settings app, they now actually have a, a section for memory. Um, so it now tells you kind of what the average memory usage was over the last 3, 6, 12, or 24 hours. Um, and you can also go in there and take a look at what each app was using up memory-wise. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a, it's a start. Uh, there's, there's not a whole lot of detail that you can get out of it yet. Um, but it's better than nothing, which is what we had before. I mean, is it really better than nothing though? Well, yeah, I've always kind of wondered like, okay, so I've got this phone with two gigs of Ram. Um, is that actually enough for me? You know, do, am I going to have to bump that up the next phone that I get? The answer's yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the reason I, I, I am asking this rhetorical question is that, it's clearly useless because, of course, what is the culprit that's using the most amount of memory? It's Android OS. Yep. And the one after that is Android System. And the one after that is System UI. And the one after that is Google Play Services. So it tells you everything you already knew, that your phone is being destroyed by things you can't do anything about. <laughs> I come over here just to hear you rant. You know that? <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, man. So um, I wish there was a this this memory thing is great. I mean, you know, it's showing you they actually had something similar to this. This is obviously the evolution of that in the developer options area. There was a, mm. a section about memory and processes using that memory, and it had that same kind of interface layout where it would show you the usage over a period of time that you selected. Mm-hmm. I wish this was rolled into a new section called performance, so that it could show you the memory usage. It could show you the CPU time, yep. it could show you individual things in an application that was taking up memory and CPU time, and maybe even battery time, radio time, whatever time. Every single stat lets me know that something is breaking my phone. I need proof that I can show. You need you need more fodder. Just give me the source code. You need more fodder for uh, screenshots and rants yes. on Google+. Plus. I mean, weekly, I post pictures of decimated battery life. And then you put, and then every once in a while you post one picture of, oh, was that Doze? That looks pretty good. Well, that was pretty impressive. One time I did leave my phone out, not in my pocket during class, mm-hmm. and it looked like it flatlined for a good hour and a half, and I was impressed. But then it, as soon as I picked it back up and put it in my pocket, it was over. <laughs> oh man! So, I guess, and after all of this, what do, what do you think about uh, the takeaway? Marshmallow? Yeah. Um. So since. <laughs> The the things that we've uh, that they've changed have all either been improvements or kind of stepping to the side, um, and we haven't encountered any fatal memory leakage problems. This yet. was a really good release. Um, yeah, that I I encourage everybody who has the opportunity to go and install 6.0 uh, to go and do it. Why would you not? Yeah, I don't I don't know why you wouldn't, um, unless your phone for some reason already runs like uh, 5.1 stable. Um, and your phone is like crunched on memory. Like if you're one oh. gig phone, mm-hmm. maybe that's a good reason not to do it. Um, but otherwise, just go and do it. Yeah, but if you're crunched for memory, how are you going to know what's using up all your memory, Ryan? You know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so Ryan, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar, and of course on Google Plus, which is where I routinely and weekly post pictures of decimated battery life. Brought to you by Google Play Services and Android Account Manager. And I'm Ian Buck. You can find me on Twitter at Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Google Plus as uh, Ian Buck and on YouTube as Ian Buck. Um, And hey, listeners, if you want to review something here on Second Opinion, if you've got uh, some ideas for things that that we can talk about or whatever, um, go ahead and hit that contact button over on the right-hand side on the the page with the show notes. Once again, that is uh, thenexus.tv slash SO1. Um, We would love to hear from you. Have a good one.